Hey guys, it's Matt and Sarah. So today we want to show you our new setup with our trailer, our hitch extension, and our weight distribution hitch. So I'm sure you've seen a lot of pictures on social media of truck frames snapping in half or just bowing in the middle with a truck camper on it. And we're going to show you why that's happening to some of these campers because that they're set up improperly and what we've done to prevent that with such a big setup. So the first thing we want to talk about is the center of gravity. So if you come over to this side here, you'll see that the center of gravity on our Arctic Fox is right here. So this is just slightly behind the tire on our truck. And so we need to watch the center of gravity as we're hauling because we don't want to put too much stress on the frame of the truck. We want the weight to be on the axles, but we also want to keep our axles within limits of it. So we're going to come back here and show you what we've done now that we've added a trailer. So down here, since we have such a large overhang with our Arctic Fox 1150, we had to get a four foot hitch extension from Torque Lift. So this is the hitch extension here, and we also got a super hitch from them. So the super hitch actually has two receivers, which is designed specifically for the super truss extension. So this 48 inch extension is pretty easy to install. We had to get um, different mounts for the rear end of the camper. And then we had to get the wire harness so we can keep our camper plugged in as well as the trailer over here. So this extension allows us to keep the front end of the trailer over here past the jacks. So that way when we're turning, we don't risk jack knifing or hitting anything um, like the jacks or hitting part of the camper itself if we were to turn very sharply. So this right here though is the weight distribution hitch we got. So this is a Kurt weight distribution hitch which is designed for 1,000 pounds of tongue weight which is a little overkill for what we do. We have a side-by-side -side in there. We're probably looking at about 500 pounds of tongue weight but we want to be better safe than sorry. So the weight distribution hitch is designed to put all of the weight on the trailer axles and the truck axles. So we don't want to have a lot of the weight sitting on the rear bumper of the truck back here because that's going to cause that bowing. We don't want to have that going on. We want the weight to be on the axles, but we also want to verify and make sure that the weight is staying within the axle ratings. So a little bit more about the weight distribution hitch. So it's a very simple setup. It, it can be a little bit foreign to people that have never done this before um, as far as setting it up. But all we had to do was purchase the hitch from Kurt, which actually came with the hitch here. And it also came with the weight distribution bars and then these pieces back here. So the way this works is that the bars come out back here and it is attached by a chain to the tongue of the trailer. So what happens with this is the chains go into here and when we lift these chains up, that brings the bars up with them because we want the bars to be fairly parallel with this portion of the front end of the trailer. And so that's gonna distribute the weight more towards the axles versus having all of the weight sitting right here on the front end of the trailer, pushing down and pushing down on to the back end of the truck. So by having that happen, the weight is distributed evenly. So another common error that we see people doing is actually welding the mounts to their truck frames. So these are the torque lift mounts that we've got over here. So these tie downs just bolt on there. They don't have to require doing any drilling into the frame. You don't have to weld them to the frame. You don't have to modify the frame at all, which is really nice because you don't want to jeopardize having a bad weld or putting holes in the frame to make it a weaker frame. So this keeps the frame stock with the truck. Some of you may be wondering, so what are the ratings for your axles on your truck? Because that's a very crucial thing that you don't want to be overloading. And you also want to look at your truck's max gross vehicle weight. So if you open the driver's side door of your truck, this should be the same on all trucks, you'll find a sticker in here. So this sticker right here tells us, even though it's hard to see since it's sideways. So this is what the front axle is rated for, which is 6,000 pounds. And then the rear axle of this specific truck is rated for 9,750 pounds. So with that in mind, that's the safest rating that they want you to be putting for maximum weight on the truck. So we actually took this to a CAT scale the other day 
we weighed the full setup with our trailer, the truck, the truck camper. We had water in it and everything is fully loaded right now as we would normally travel since we are on the road. We're in California right now. And let me take out my phone here and I'll show you the sticker. We'll see if this shows up in the video. So as you can see, if I zoom in, the steer axle, which is the front axle, is 5,400 pounds. So we are 600 pounds less than what the, the maximum rating is for. The drive axle, which is the rear axle, is 9,840 pounds, which is about 100 pounds overweight, but that's still very, very close to being the max for safety. And then the trailer axle is 4,700 pounds. So our total setup is just under 20,000 pounds. That's having the side-by-side -side in there, full tanks of fuel um, and water. So with that setup, we can travel safely and we can look and make sure, hey, are we way overweight? How are we looking? And some of these truck campers out there are easily thousands and thousands of pounds overweight. So this is a Ram 3500 Dually. It does have a lot of weight capacity to be hauling big campers like this. But if you ever look into some of the larger campers that have multiple slide outs, we do recommend looking at something like a Ram 4500 or an F450 or higher, such as a 5500, just because you want to be able to travel safely. You don't want to be hitting a big bump at 60 miles an hour and having your frame getting strained. The Torque Lift 48 inch extension is only rated at 600 pounds for tongue weight when you're not using a weight distribution hitch like the one we have here. So by using this weight distribution hitch, you can actually double it back up to 1200 pounds, which for what we haul is plenty safe. Um, but if you do not use a weight distribution hitch, you're gonna risk putting a lot of stress on the extension, which is not a good thing. So I believe this Kurt extension costs like about 300 to $350. So for us, yes, it's a little bit of an investment, but it is highly worth it because $350 versus having how many thousands of dollars snapping away with the truck, with the extension, with the trailer, it just wouldn't make any sense. So we highly recommend looking into a weight distribution hitch if you plan on towing something such as a trailer or something with a lot of weight with an extension. So when talking about weights, another thing to consider whether or not you have a trailer or something that you're towing behind is the payload of your vehicle. So every truck is gonna be a little different. You could have a Ram 1500 or an F-150, or you could have a big Ram 5500. Um, this is a Ram 3500. And since we have a diesel in it, our max payload specifically for this truck is a little less than 5,500 pounds. So the payload is whatever you have in the vehicle, in the bed of it, in the cab, anything that you're hauling with. So that could be you, the fuel, um, your def, a camper, and everything in the camper. So when we look at this vehicle, there's a sticker on the back end of the camper here. So this gives all the information about how much water it holds, how many pounds of gas, and this is 3,874 pounds of dry weight. So dry weight is gonna be without water, without gray water, without anything in it, just the camper, the frame, and everything in it by itself. So right now we're definitely way under our maximum payload, but once we add us in the mix, a full tank of water, everything else, right now with this one, we have it just under 5,000 pounds for our uh, payload for the camper. So you wanna figure that into your truck as well when you're hauling. And so since we added the camper or the trailer on as well, we needed to figure out, well, how are we gonna distribute the weight evenly with that? So with the hitch, when, with adding that on and using a weight distribution hitch, we're not going to be putting too much weight on just the back end. We're distributing it from the back ax or from the axles of the trailer all the way to the front axle of the truck. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below. If you have any other questions about the setup or the weight distribution hitch, we just wanted to give you kind of a rundown for safety and why some of this stuff is happening to the trucks. And thank you for watching.